I'm David, this is Spencer, and welcome to Aftermath. Welcome back to Aftermath, the sportscast, where we cover the 912 area. We just got we're down with week two. Um, it was an insane week. We thought it was going to be a little bit better, but we're going to dive into that just in a little bit. Before we do, I want to appreciate you being here. Thank you. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Our views are going up. Our subscribers are going up. We're making more motion in the city, so we do appreciate all you all support. Um, going into your quick picks, you went... Eight and two this week, which is, I mean, that's all right. That's Yo, pretty good. <laughs> me to go 100% every week. Like, uh, no, nah, he did really good this week. Overall, he is 17 and five. Come on, man. Uh, which is a little off. bit behind from last year, but we'll Let see. Let him know how my final record from last year. Oh, final record from last year, we went back. It was 97 and 16, on, really which is like 88% or something like that. Um, which kind of why it's a little bit shocking that he's doing so bad this year. I'm 17 and five. <laughs> how was that bad? I say, uh, going into it, Effingham would lose a tough one against Houston County. Yeah. Say they lost forty-four to forty-one. Yep, I heard. Uh, I'm gonna say Effingham was down twenty-one to three at halftime. Mm-hmm. So the second half, they had a really great performance. Uh, I don't know what happened in that first half, but if they're able to play like they did in the second half for the rest of the season, Effingham's probably gonna be a real sneaky team to sneak mm-hmm. up on people. As they go into the second game, Richmond Hill, the per- the team that you had at number five preseason, that might be moving up the ranks a little bit after this one, beat Glen Academy 31-12. to Very good win. That's a good win. I want to say Glen Academy just beat Wayne County last week. Wayne mm-hmm. County is a good team. Richmond Hill came out, had a good defense to show in. Offense seems solid. So, yeah, they had a nice win, though. I'd say BC went over to Buford, um, took them on number – Five top ten team in the nation. I'm not exactly sure they're ranked. They lost them by one point in the last minute, twenty nine to twenty eight. But a hell of a showing. Crazy. I was I was watching that game on my phone mm-hmm. while I was filming the filming the Savannah Christian game. But nah, BC came out to play. If BC is able to play like that for the rest of the season, man, and stay healthy, mm-hmm. BC is going to be all right. Everybody's crying and complaining and acting like BC fell off because they're zero two. Last Let's time they remember. were last time they were zero and two went thirteen and zero and won the cha- state championships. So. I would say their coach puts their schedule like that for a reason. Mm-hmm. He knows that if he can first two weeks can play some of the toughest teams that he can find when they go to region play, they're ready. And they should have had that. Yeah, Buford had two two point conversions that they scored on the last like five minutes of the game. BC should have stopped one of them, but. Nah, say, that was a really, really good performance. Want to know Mackay? I say Mackay had another interception. Pick six. No more turf. Off the turf no toe. more turf toe. Man, Mackay's a beast, man. Yeah, and say he's turning up over there. Going to the next game, Beach would beat Savannah High forty-one to zero. No said. Man, I don't know. What's... Yeah. Yeah, I've been. Uh, Groves would lose <laughs> to out West. Beach, <laughs> Shout out Beach. Shout out Beach. Groves would lose to West Lauren twenty-eight to zero. But we heard some good things from Groves, actually. Yeah, from what I was hearing, they were saying that the defense looked pretty solid throughout the game. They were just saying offense is just still learning that new system, mm-hmm. trying to get everything together. But it's going to be interesting to see once they get in the region play and start playing the city school. Yeah. So Windsor took on Brantley County this week. They actually would come out with a win 20-8. to eight. Big shout out yeah. to Windsor, man. That's a good win for, like we were talking about the other day, Brantley's always are like that little iffy team. They're not bad, but they're not super good. They're always around like that 500 middle range, but that's a good win for them. Uh-huh. Say so, Savannah Country Day would lose to Athens Athens Academy 35-0. to zero. Yeah. I don't know what's going on at Country Day. I know they lost a lot, but dang, that's a bad loss. They might need to go back with that quarterback. One of the coaches over at Athens Academy, he was over at uh, Savannah Christian last year, but Basically, just they just overpowered Country Day. Uh-huh. Say so, San Andrews would have a closer game this week. They still would lose to Hilton Head, uh, Hilton Head Prep, nineteen to thirteen. It's a better performance, especially way better. Off of what they did last week. I only lose that like forty two to three or something. Mm, forty two zero. Forty oh, look. But, 40, uh, it might be forty nine zero. It better forty. Man, that's this whole. Forty two zero. Forty two zero. Okay, yeah, but like you said, way better performance. Way better. Nineteen to thirteen. Hopefully, they're able to pull things together, get a win next week. So the other pick that you got wrong this week, Bethesda would lose to Thomas Hayward, forty-one to thirty-two. Man, that's a tough way, man. They're supposed to be defending the crown, man. Y'all mm-hmm. defending the state champs. 
But kind of getting off the game a little bit. Did you see what they were talking about over the weekend? They were trying to say Bethesda has a top five receiver core in the whole season. I did see that. That is insanity. Mm, you got DC, <laughs> Calvary, Hill. Who else? Santa Cruz. I mean, Santa Cruz can throw the good, ball, but they got yeah, a few got good, good players that you can put out a receiver. When Jenkins is solid. Crazy. Is it bad? I don't know nothing about Bethesda, but <laughs> this might be a hot take. Ireland's receivers. I mean, they got they got they got Jaden. That's about all they need. If we say receiver core, we can't, <laughs> we can't put one receiver messed up with. I mean, hey, you put Curtis out there. You put Curtis out there. Hot take, and I. Put Curdy's out there. That's I don't know. I don't know Bethesda's uh, wide receiver core like that, but yeah, I don't, I don't know about that one. I know I know they have a lot of new transfers, so I just haven't seen them all together. Just say uh, go in the comment yeah. section. Roast I need y'all to comment down. Who are y'all's top five receiver cores in the city? People were saying Jacob. Jacob's ones are wing T. <laughs> <laughs> they got Trent. Trust the dog. Don't get me wrong. They have dogs over there, but they run a wing T. Yeah. You can't put a wing T <laughs> offense as the best receiver top. Nah. Say go, in, down below. say go into the game of the week, the one I got wrong, the one that you got right. I'll take my levels when I get it. New Hampshire <laughs> lost to Savannah Christian 35-7. to seven. Um, oh. What can we say? Do we want to hop into the good side of Savannah Christian first? Because there ain't a lot of upsides to the New Hampshire. Oh, uh, man. I, yeah, I guess we can just go ahead and talk about Savannah Christian. Go ahead and, you know, shout out to them, man. I already knew they had one of the best offense and defensive lines in the state. Uh, their front seven came and showed out. Mm-hmm. Their secondary played a lot better than anybody expected. But excuse me, it's also because of that front seven. Mm-hmm. Sean didn't have pre- or didn't have any time to sit back to read anything. There was pressure in his face all game long. I want to say he finished the game. With, what was the stat line? It was sixty-two yards, one interception. It's like eight for nineteen. Eight for nineteen. Yeah, he. Every other play, he was on the ground. Like they mm-hmm. were all over him. And man, I wasn't. I was expecting a high-scoring game. I was expecting yeah. 42-35, you know, 42-35. Like, I don't think anyone like expected that. that. Like, it but was, the thing right. I kept telling people before the game, so like, oh, what's your score predictions? And I, I was in that 42-35 range. Uh, but I, I kept saying unless one team doesn't show up to play. And, and I can't – I don't want to put all the blame on New Hampshire because I do think New Hampshire tried. But that, like you said, that front seven made it practically impossible to – Throw the ball anywhere further than 10 yards. I mean, they had a few where Sean would literally just take the one-step drop and throw it up and hope mm-hmm. that Kamari would go get it. Um, but other than that, he was getting hit almost every play. They did try to establish the run early. Didn't really work out too, about, too well, uh, which we kind of figured that that would be shut down. Yeah. But what didn't get shut down was Savannah Christian's running, running game. Oh, I mean, Zoe ran for 171 yards, three touchdowns. Kenry added the touchdown. Dogs out there, I mean, they the were. Line they had to average bullies. six, seven yards a carry, bro. Had to, and there was some. If there's any bright spots in New Hampshire, it was their defense line played a pretty okay game. Mm-hmm. I mean, compared to everything else, but I mean, Zoe Smalls and that offensive line, man, they were just bullying them up front, just like how they did last week. Like that front, those front, mm-hmm. that front line on Savannah Christian is just so dangerous. They're Same. all young. They're big. They're strong. They're physical. They play till the whistle. Mm-hmm. Like I know Sometimes a, past the whistle. I know there's a lot of people crying and complaining, talking about holding. Man, you can call holding on every play. Yeah. And when you're that big and it's a mismatch in size, yeah, of course, the people going to pull away. Like, you're going to see some holding. Mm-hmm. But they just got overpowered. They got over physical. They just – and from what I heard at the beginning of the game, somebody told me that New Hampshire looked like they didn't have any energy before the game started. So – I don't know what was going on. It looked like they were talking a lot during the week. I don't mm-hmm. know if they <laughs> used all their energy during the week or what. But well, the other thing is, up. they they could have gotten off the field on multiple occasions in the first half. Right. But it would be fourth and three, third and three, third and two. Savannah, it, it, guys, if coaches are watching, Savannah Christian goes on two if it's if they're within five yards in the third down. They do every time. Hey, why are you snitching? I, I'm not. <laughs> I'm just a. I'm a. I'm a journalist. I, I call what I see because it was They're pissing snitching. me off, bro. <laughs> Because these kids should know that. Nah, that should be something that is talked after, about throughout the week. Especially after you got caught jumping off sides multiple times. Because I'm talking, this was like six, seven, eight off sides in the first half. They had one drive where they jumped off sides five times. Yeah. Literally five times. 
which made which made drives their first drive was Smackers first drive was like seven and a half minutes. Yep. I'm I mean, I think every drive was averaging over five minutes. Yeah, it was crazy. They lived like I want to say Savannah Christian. There was probably two drives where they had to punt the ball. Yeah. Like, they sustained they sustained drives perfectly. They did. They played the exact game they wanted to play. Mm-hmm. They took New Hampshire out of their game. Uh, if there's, yeah, I don't know what. I that, mean, that, they just caught me off guard, man. I was not. Expe- I was expecting Hemp to put up a way better performance. Mm-hmm. I hold Hemp to a way higher standard, but uh, man, shout out. I, man. I do think that this is going to be a rare occasion because I, I don't so. think New Hampshire. I don't. I don't know Wayne County. I don't know the rest of the region how their front seven is, but I would hope that this is going to be the hardest front seven they go up against. It might be the hardest, maybe. But boy, them boys over in Ware County, mm-hmm. BC, one of Robbins, Perry, yeah, can't sleep on Effingham, who they got coming up next week, like Richmond Hill, yeah, it's gonna be tough, man. Ham oh, definitely man, has to clean some things. Ridiculous, it's tough. You want to talk about hardest schedules? BC has it for sure, but if you, you look at that Ham schedule, boy, and right. they play Calgary mm-hmm. in a scrimmage, like who haven't they played? I say I will say this though: they're coaching their coaches, even when they are down twenty-one zero, they are very uplifting, saying, "Hey." This cheap chopping wood, they're going to get tired, which they were. They were starting to cramp up later in that, that third. Yeah, y'all need to drink some water, man. Start stretching. I don't know what's going on, but kids be cramping. If y'all, and I don't care how y'all want to. Y'all prefer to eat mustard during the game than just drink water during the week. And y'all barely practice. Yeah. Bro, we were doing two a days, three a days when we was in school. That's... Y'all barely practice. Y'all, y'all's bodies should be. Yeah. You got to get off that, man. But. <laughs> Anyways, it was it was a good week. I wish that game was a little bit closer. I think we all do. I don't think anyone guessed that it was going to go that way. Did anyone get the score prediction correct? Uh, I want to say Pro Shock Media. Uh, okay. Good. I want to say okay. he called out thirty five seven. So shout out to him, man. He shout got out some to fire him. pictures. Oh, yeah, check, check him, him out. Instagram. That's my dog. I say we uh we appreciate you being here. That's all we got for this episode. Nice quick episode. Just get the scores out there. Um, oh, also, yeah. well, I don't know what you were about to say. One reason why we don't switch sides because of my oh. logo. If y'all don't see our Instagram names are right here on the table. If we switch sides, they're stickers. I can't be, take them off. Yeah, I'm not gonna be on their Duke's Instagram. We, I was actually gonna ask if anyone knows where we can get flags for all the uh, the schools. We got an idea for the backdrop. We just don't know where to get the flags from. That's kind of an idea we came up with today. We're gonna be looking ourselves as well. But if anyone knows, make sure you like put them in the comments. Right. We're gonna send us some stuff, man. Our table is naked now. Yeah, man. he took my laptop from me. So we needed it. We um, need to get some stuff on the table. Man. So yeah, any ideas of what we could put on the table? Put it in the comments. We're we're gonna be looking. We're trying to upgrade the set a little bit. Got some merch coming soon, so y'all look out for it. Y'all yeah, you notice I don't have. I never have it. Uh, but anyways, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you get notifications when we post. We are premiering um, every. This is a Tuesday episode, so it should be out by Tuesday around six o'clock. Uh, but until uh, Thursday, peace.